Even if you know how AI to HTML works, once you really start to get working with it, there is a pretty big problem that comes up very, very quickly. And that is you export, everything's beautiful, and you resize your window and suddenly everything looks like trash. So we are going to fix this awful trash text issue, or at least most of it today. All right, let's get going. First off, we just have a normal HTML or AI file here. Um, if I run AI to HTML on it, run AI to HTML, it says we have no errors. It gives me this delightful AI to HTML output folder. And then there it is. So like I showed you before, as you start to resize it, things go bad. We're going to fix these issues one at a time. The first issue you're going to come across is your big, beautiful title text here. As you resize the page, it's the first thing that's going to get cut off. My suggestion to you is just get rid of it. Get rid of that title text. The reason you are using AI to HTML is so that you can make probably a few different artboards, right? A big version, a mobile version, something like that. The title is probably going to stay the same throughout all of them, so just put it in your HTML. It's very, very easy for your text to be too big and get cut off on the side, and while there are kind of ways around it, none of them work well. So, strong, strong recommendation, just delete that text, put it in your HTML at the end. So, I'm going to save this file, I'm going to run that script, nice work, thank you. And now, there we go, we got rid of the problem by just deleting it. Alright, problem number two is this text over here, um, the labels on the bar, as, actually let's not go to that yet, let's say this text right here this 80 units. As we make 80 units smaller, or as we even make seven units down here smaller, they start to interact with the bar. So that S suddenly, oh, it's outside of the bar. And then the seven here is touching the bar, which isn't good. We want to maintain the spacing here. The reason why all of these things are happening, you can solve with one tool and that is the paragraph alignment tool here. Um, if you don't have it, you can go to window type paragraph. It might also be up at the top depending on the way your uh, illustrator is set up. So the issue is that this text right here is left aligned, and because this text is left aligned, we can see the little anchor right there, when we resize the page, the thing that this text wants to preserve is this left anchor point right here. If we could see this a little bit better, um, I don't know how we could, but the 80 units, the start of this 80 is always going to be right here, and it's here. I can add a little line there just so we can see it. I'm going to add a line. I'm going to make this line black. I'm going to give it a little bit of stroke. That's definitely white and not black. That's fine. Okay, so I have made this line right here, and it lines up with the left-hand side of the 80, and I'm going to export. As I resize, Notice that no matter what happens, it always stays right up against that line. Now you say, I don't care about the left-hand side of the 80 units. I want the right-hand side to always stay in the right place. Always stay, you know, let's say 6 pixels, 10 pixels, whatever, from the right-hand side of the bar. The way we are going to fix this is we're going to select it and we're going to say right align. The anchor point is now on the right-hand side of 80 units. Now, after you do that, yes, you are going to have to reposition it in the right location. It is going to jump around. But now that we have said anchor this on the right-hand side, align this on the right-hand side, when I save this, 
run it again, run AI to HTML, refresh our page. The spacing on the right hand side is always going to be consistent, no matter where that right hand side is on the page. Now we can do the same thing with this seven units down at the bottom. We don't want it to get any closer to the bar here. What we're interested in is maintaining an anchor on the left hand side for this. So I'm going to say align this to the left, position it a certain distance away from that bar, run the script, and now when we refresh, it will always maintain that distance no matter what's happening. So if we look at this here as a graphic for you to watch and see how to fix it, otherwise your work won't look good, as we start to resize it, we can see that it seems to overflow on the right and it overflows on the left at the same time. That's because this text is center aligned. Even though it looks like it's lined up against the left hand side, if we click every single one of these, we can see center aligned, center aligned, center aligned, center aligned. Now, if we want to fix this, I'm gonna click all of them and I'm going to say left align all of this text. It's going to look ugly. It's always going to look ugly. Um, as soon as you change the alignment, that's fine. No big deal. We're then going to click align objects. It's going to line them up all on the left. Align objects moves the shape, not the anchor point. The paragraph align tool is concerned with the anchor point. If we zoom in, it's this... Uh, little black dot right there. It says this is where we're going to maintain consistency of position while everything else on the page might change. Whereas the align objects tool just puts them all in a line, even though they're all still left aligned. So I'm going to move this over to the left. Looks good. I'm going to save. I'm going to say, hey, let's run that script again. Okay, and now I refresh, and is this what we actually want? Is this what we actually want? No, because what we're actually interested in is making sure there's distance between this text and these bars over here. What we really want to have happen is your work won't look good to not overlap the bar. So even though visually it seems like this is what we're interested in, um, this green line on the side, um, what, and the fact that these all seem to be lined up to the left, we're really interested in, no, we want to keep them a certain distance from the right. So instead of left aligning all of these, we're going to right align all of them. But we're not going to do them like this yet. We're going to say, align them to the right, align the text to the right, but align all the objects to the left. Save it. Run the script again. Refresh. <coughs> and there we go. As we're resizing it, we see that it successfully maintains this distance from the right. Now, is that really what we want, though? Um, there's a couple issues here. One is, as we start to resize, it's going to overlap this green graphic, or this green little thing here. And then once we get to a certain size, the text actually goes off the side of the page. A few ways to fix this. Number one, we just delete this green thing, right? We deleted the text at the top because it got in the way. Now we're going to delete, delete that green thing to get it out of the way script, other script, AI to HTML, export, life is good. We start to resize and it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine until we hit here and things start to go off the side of the page. Now this is where using AI to HTML becomes important, right? So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to put I'm going to put this green thing back here. I'm going to nah, am I? No, it's fine. We'll stick with this. What happens is this graphic looks fine, looks fine, looks fine, looks fine, looks fine, looks fine, looks fine until we hit this point here where it goes off the side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my web inspector. Uh, you can go to view developer, you know, developer tools uh, is usually the shortcut key that I use. It comes up and as you resize the screen, you can see what size this starts to look bad at. So it looks fine in the 700s, but once we get down to about, let's say right here's where it cuts. So, you know, until maybe let's say 730, everything is fine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come down and we're going to make a new artboard. And we're going to say, you know what, this graphic looks fine until it gets to 730 pixels. And once it gets to 730 pixels, we want some different kind of graphic. So I'm going to paste this down into here. I'm going to resize all of these bars. And notice that because I have them all selected, it's going to resize them all together. And then maybe I will actually align this text to the right and maybe make it a little bit smaller. I don't want to go below, let's say, 16 pixels, um, but there we go. Make the artboard a little bit bigger. And now I save it. Now I can export. This time, I now have two artboards. And what's going to happen is, once I add the AI to HTML resizer script here, the big version of the screen, or the big version of the graphics is gonna show up here. And then once it starts to get smaller, it's going to use the other graphic. Basically, what you're gonna to wanna to do is tweak things around until it looks good at all sizes. In this case, it's going to start to look bad at, let's say, around the 500s. And I could just say, hey, let's just break this across two different lines. I can change it to be your work won't look good. Here's the size. Um, the same sort of thing is going to happen. Script, other script, run that export. refresh it, and now the graphic is still going to look good, even when I get smaller, 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 smaller. Now I'm down to, you know, 400-ish pixels. I could do the exact same thing with and see how to fix it. I can throw that across two different lines. Every time I just want to run export. And so now we can see this graphic looks pretty good, except for this annotation, um, until we get to basically mobile size. So around 350 is mobile size. We won't have to worry about it anymore. The one final thing that we can really see is going wrong once we get to this small size is how important starts to overlap with the bars. Now, think of this the same way you think of where this should be anchored, where this should be anchored, and where we anchored those 80 units up top. We would like important to be left anchored on this arrow here. So as we make it smaller, it stays growing off to the right of that arrow. So I'm going to say paragraph, select important. It's going to jump when I realign it, but it's fine. Stick it right there. We'll do the same thing with this one. And hey, why not add that 80 units down to this as well? I'll make it a little bit smaller since we're going to go with a smaller graphic. But there we go. So this is uh, 
right aligned text. This is left aligned text because we're aligning it according to where this point is. This is left aligned text because we want to keep it a certain distance from the bar. And this is all right aligned because we want it a certain distance from the bar on the right as well. So file scripts, run it one more time, refresh this page, and there we go. It is a perfect responsive visualization where no matter what we do, resizing, we either have this big one that's you know in our face looking great, as it gets smaller, once the resizing script is in there, um, even though we make it pretty small, eh, maybe not that small, maybe not that small, um, but you know, the, the low 300s, um, we're going to be fine. So there you go. That is how to fix text alignment issues when working with Adobe Illustrator. To a certain degree, the game here is make sure your paragraphs are aligned in response to where you want those anchor points to be. But at a certain point, you just have to give up and change the graphic to make it work on a smaller screen. Can't take up all that space with all that text. But even once you do resize it, you still wanna make sure all of your paragraph alignments are making sure you got those good anchor points. The end, good work.